Following on with our war film series looking at each defining era, we're moving on to look at the 10 best war films made in the 1960s. Number 10 The Longest Day The Longest Day is an epic drama featuring an all-star international cast that chronicles the D-Day invasion from the standpoint of both sides. At just under three hours long, it is indeed a marathon, but The Longest Day remains a grimly authentic recreation of events with Oscar-winning special effects and cinematography. D-Day veterans served as consultants, and actor Richard Todd actually saw action at Pegasus Bridge as part of Operation Overlord. Number 9, The Guns and Averone. And to leave a little note. And then she takes us to the wedding party and we're caught like rats in a trap because we can't get to our guns. But even if we can, it means slaughtering half the population of Mandracus. You are an insane man! Based on Alistair McLean's 1957 novel of the same name, The Guns and Averone depicts a version of the Battle of Leros during the Dodecanese campaign, with this fictional adaptation following a group of British commandos and Greek partisans on a guerrilla mission to destroy two huge German guns on the fictional Greek island of Navarone. Featuring fantastic performances from David Niven, Gregory Peck and Anthony Quinn, The Guns and Navarone is an action-packed classic no war film aficionado should miss. Number 8, Where Eagles Dare. Somebody's got to be crazy. Just how'd your colonel expect anyone to get in there? Another take from writer Alistair McLean, who stepped up to write the screenplay and the novel simultaneously, Where Eagles Dare stars Richard Burton, Clint Eastwood and Mary Ure. Parachuted into the German Alps, they have one day to rescue an American general held in a supposedly impregnable mountaintop fortress. Every chase and gun battle is a classic, and the climactic fight on top of the cable cars remain etched into the memory of a generation. We got company. Broadsword calling Danny Boy. Number 7, The Dirty Dozen. Why don't you have to march? <laughs> because condemned men don't have to drill. <laughs> and there's nothing you can do about it, mister. Robert Aldrich's violent, high-spirited The Dirty Dozen tapped into the spirit of the era. Bringing in a remarkable all-star cast to play a band of military convicts gathered by Lee Marvin's officer to perform a dangerous behind-enemy-lines mission in the lead-up to D-Day. Aldrich brings a somewhat light touch to the film's opening acts, but the unsparing final stretch leads to a sobering body count and some unavoidable acts of violence that look far from heroic, brutally showcasing the bloodshed of war. Number 6, Zulu. You think the worst can't do better than that, Owen? Well, they've got a very good base section, mine. But no top tenors, that's for sure. Set almost entirely in a missionary station in the then British colony of Natal, Zulu is a single location movie that makes the utmost of its limitation, with the surrounding views of the South African mountains being truly staggering. The battle sequences are frenzied and desperate, and there's a justifiably star-making performance by Michael Caine, as an entitled officer coming good under pressure. Number 5, Ivan's Childhood. Гвоздь потерял. Помог бы найти. Все равно делать нечего. Заходи. Fighting would become an insistent theme in the work of Russian director Andrei Tarkovsky, the Soviet giant who opened the world to his nation's more ambitious cinema in the 1960s and 1970s. But even though his other movies have become more popular, such as Solaris, it's this one that remains his most emotional, following a boy who becomes a Soviet spy whilst working behind the German lines. <laughs> Come on, 
Number four, The Great Escape. Why 17? This is the 17th tunnel that he started. The movie to which many subsequent star packed World War II films aspired, John Sturges' The Great Escape fills a German prisoner of war camp with an all star cast, including James Garner, Richard Attenborough, Charles Bronson, James Coburn, and most memorable of all, Steve McQueen, as allied prisoners determined to break out. Each brings his own skill to the endeavour, which Sturges shows in meticulous detail, and the film plays like a light hearted heist film until a violent climax reminds us we've been watching a war film all along. How many? 50. It looks, after all, as if you will see Berlin before I do. Number three, Army of Shadows. Lass uns die Feuer geben. Gib Feuer! Jean-Pierre Melville's portrait of French resistance fighters makes a beautiful case for honour amongst wanted men. Backroom beatings and drive-by shooting spark a mostly conversational film about the sacrifice of spies. Melville's reputation had previously rested on gangster pictures like Le Samurai, but to see his filmography widened was a revelation. Faut bien se comme on peut par ces temps de misère. C'est tout naturel. C'est pas trop mal dans ce camp. C'est le meilleur camp qui soit en France. C'est le camp des Allemands. Number two, the Battle of Algiers. <laughs> A perfect meeting of story and style, Gilo Pontecorvo's warfare drama The Battle of Algiers reflects in its docudrama style the guerrilla tactics of the revolutionary Algerian National Liberation Front. Like a great documentary would, The Battle of Algiers takes a coolly balanced and non-judgmental view of its subjects, coming down neither on the side of the radicals nor the colonialists. The director's greatest achievement is that not a second of his film is without purpose. Before we reveal our number one war film, here are some honourable mentions that just missed the list. Spartacus. Dr. Zhivago. Listen, lads. Ten miles up that road are the Germans! <laughs> the train. <laughs> the hill. You'd prop up dead men and inspect them if you was ordered to. Right. You're right! War and Peace. Von Ryan's Express. Number one, Lawrence of Arabia. One of the most acclaimed pieces of filmmaking ever, director David Lean's magnificent historical biopic follows British officer T. Lawrence as he works to unite the different Arab tribes during World War I to fight the Ottoman Turks. The film is a unique battle epic, and Lean spent nearly three years making the movie on location in Jordan, Spain, Morocco and the UK, at a cost estimated around £200 million in today's currency, ultimately going on to receive seven Oscars, including Best Picture and Best Director. Thank you for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button for our next video in the series, looking at the best war movies of the 1950s.